Hello and welcome to Crantock Art in Western Supermare in the southwest of England. Um, this afternoon we're going to have a little go at making some ball animals. The reason I haven't put a video up for a little while is because I've actually been working on creating templates to make animals. The one we're going to have a go at in this session is making the elephant. My elephant, unlike this fella, is going to have some legs. This one's uh, just a ball. but. Basically, these are all made as a ball, which I'll show you how to make at the beginning of each video. And then I've got a template with pieces to cut out to make the, uh, the faces and the heads. So, first of all, before we start, there's a few things you're going to need. First of all, you're going to need a copy of the template, uh, which is available on Etsy. You're also going to need a knife to cut your clay with. You're going to need a paintbrush. Uh, this is going to make the holes for the eyes, so you want one that's not too thin at the end. You need a rolling pin. I've got a kid's one here, but the bigger ones are available. You need some guide sticks or some way to roll your clay so that it's five millimetres thick, and that's the thickness of these sticks. Something to smooth your clay with. I tend to use lollipop sticks and a pencil. You'll also find it useful to have a bowl of some sort. Uh, doesn't really matter whether it's wood like this one or a plastic one or a ceramic one, but something with a nice curve inside, and we're going to use that to make our ball round in due course. With the template, before you start, it's also a good idea to stick the pieces onto a piece of cardboard and then cut round them, and that will make them a little bit more rigid and a bit more usable, so you don't have to keep printing it out every time you want to replace them. Okay, so I have already rolled out the pieces I need for the head, which are here. So I should put those to one side for a minute and take my ball of clay. So we start off with a ball of clay about 350 grams. And we need to make this into a nice ball shape. Now, if we leave it solid like this, if you intend to fire it, so if it's normal clay, this is going to be a problem. There's almost certainly air trapped in this. So we've got to actually turn this into a pinch pot ball. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to cut this in half. It doesn't have to be a precise half, like that. And then each piece of this I'm going to put into my non-dominant hand. So I'm right-handed, so I'm going to put this into my left hand. I'm going to get my thumb of my right hand, and I'm going to push it into the middle of this clay, I try to sort of feel my thumb pushing against my hand, but I don't want to go right through, so I get it like that. Then holding it firmly in my left, I put my thumb of my right inside, and then draw the clay up all the way around. So my thumb stays still, and I pull the clay up all the way around, turning it in my hand each time. And again, keeping my hand firmly around it to stop it from splaying out. A lot of people have problems with pinch pots where they just keep collapsing, and the trick is to hold it firmly, and to pull up, not out. Once I've gone all the way around once, now I'm going to go around and I'm just going to, this is where the pinching bit comes in. I go around now and I'm checking to get it the same thickness all the way around. And I want it about, again, five millimetres thick. So I don't want it too thin, otherwise it's going to be too big and it's going to collapse as you work with it. And I don't want it too thick, otherwise it's likely not to dry properly. If you find you're going through, and I've got a little bit thin there, I'm just going to work the clay back over it and keep it nice and even. Once I've done that to one pot, so I've now got a little cup, I'm now going to do it to the other side. So again, put it in my hand, pushing with my thumb till I feel my thumb push against my hand, stroke the clay up all the way around. And then once I've gone around once, again, check it, pinch it out, make sure it's the same thickness everywhere. This way it will dry better, more evenly, and have less problems with it. This is also make sure that if there is any air bubbles trapped in the, the walls, as you pinch it, you're going to push them out. So now I've got two little pots, two little cups, I've got to put them together. So before I do, we've got to get them to stick, so we need to score them. So I get my knife, and I go around the top of each one, put in some crosses, all the way around it. This is what we call scoring. It's just roughing up the surface enough so that the two surfaces can stick together. So do that to one, do that to the other. As you see, it doesn't matter if it's not even. We're going to make it even before we're done. So go around again, rough it all up, all the way around the two surfaces. Then to make these two stick together, I'm going to use some clay mixed with water, what we call slip, which I've got here. So let's get those two paintbrushes out of the way. 
so lovely nice sloppy stuff which I can paint on around here if you're wondering why it's a different colour we've actually got two different batches of clay on the go at the moment it doesn't make any difference they're both buff stoneware so after firing they'll be the same colour but when it first goes on like this you can see the difference between them so I've got to put these together as best I can so I can see I've got a little bit of a rise up there and a bit of a dip there so I'll put those together there and I go round pull it out as required and given your best intentions you will probably find there's a bit that doesn't fit don't worry coax it together as best you can into that okay so we've got what looks like a bit like a, a muddy potato then to make these two pieces stick together we're going to take a piece of clay and I'm going to make it into a coil so I start off with rolling it just between my hands move them out of the way get it on the board give yourself plenty of room to work because you want to do long rolls without too much pressure. If you put too much pressure on it, it'll go square. If you don't put enough pressure on it, you won't go anywhere. So it is a bit of a trial and error. I'm going to get something like that. doesn't matter if it's a bit flat, because it, this is going to be a joining piece. So it's not the end of the world if it's not round. Then we get our slip again, and I'm going to paint it around this join. Like that. And then I'm going to put my of clay all around it and if it doesn't quite meet up don't panic just get yourself another little bit of clay it doesn't have to be one continuous piece so don't panic about it having got that on I now need to smooth this onto the two pieces so I take my good old lollipop stick and I stroke the clay down onto one side of the pot and then I stroke it down onto the other side don't be tempted to just go along because that isn't actually going to join it and make it disappear, but it won't actually seal the two together. So across the top, like that, all the way around. And you might be thinking at this point, well, that's not a very even ball, but this is just the first stage of it. All the way around like that. It's important at this point to make a really good job of this because we've now sealed that like that and we've now got basically a ball of air in there which allows us to be able to push against it without the whole thing collapsing. So the next thing I do is give it a little bit of coaxing, smooth it with my thumb a little bit and start to try and get it into looking something a little bit more like a ball and less like a potato. See how it's starting to shape up. Because I've got that ball of air trapped in there, I can push against it, as I say. If you're doing this and it starts to collapse, check it over very carefully that you haven't got a crack somewhere that's letting the air out. So we've got it sort of round. It's still not round enough to be one of my animals, so we need to go on to the next stage, which is where the bowl comes in. So we put the clay into the bowl, give it a good roll around, and see how it starts to smooth it and make it go round. See how it's improving all the time. If you find doing this that the clay is starting to get a bit dry and cracking, give it a little spray with some water and smooth it in. If you find you've got bigger cracks and things like that that you can't fill, get a little bit of clay, dip it in the slip, put it in and work it in. Smooth it down again. You might have to do this a few times, working over it, finding bits that aren't flat, that aren't coming in the shape you want them. And just get your hand on it, smooth them down. As always, the best tool is your fingers. So it's improving all the time. Let's put it back in the bowl, give it another go. the difference from what we started with to what we've got now. now I'm not worried too much about some of these marks on it it's an elephant after all but also we're going to cover some of these up as we build onto this ball of clay so I will then perfect it at the end when I'm done. So having got our ball we now have to decide which is the top 
which is the bottom of our elephant. So having a look at it, let's see, it almost certainly won't be perfectly round. And this one isn't too bad, but I think, I don't know, that's, that speaks to me of an elephant's bum. I don't know why, but it does. So I think that's going to be the head end there. And I'm just going to put a little mark there just to remind me. X marks the spot. So having worked out where my head's going to go, I now need to think about his legs. So I've weighed out 70 grams of clay here, which I'm going to roll into a ball again. And in the template, you'll find a little disc of like that. This is the standard base, so it's although it says giraffe, it's the same for the elephant. And what we need to do with this disc is we make this piece of clay. Fit it. So like that around, around. Put that on the top. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect fit, but something like that. And it'll be about that thick. And sit on the disc. So then what we've got to do with this, again, before we put it on, we've got to score it. Like that. Put some stuff on it. And then so that's the front of the elephant. So I want this elephant looking up slightly on this occasion, so I'm going to put it like that on the bottom. And then I'm going to screw and screw and screw it till it stops moving. A little bit of pressure, a little bit of screwing. Eventually it should rip. There we go. To make sure his legs stay on, I'm now going to put a coil of clay around them. So roll this out. Again, nice long rolls. I'm going to put that around there. I don't need to add extra slip because you can see the slip's oozing out the side. So that's that's enough. That should do the job. Put it round. In this case, my core is slightly too long, so I'm going to nip a bit off. Get my tool again. Take the surplus clay off it. And again, work it up onto the ball at the top and then down onto our legs at the bottom. Some of you might be thinking, well, that's a very thick lump of clay. That's going to cause problems, but it won't by the time I've finished with it. It's just a starting point. So I'm going to do that all the way around. And down there, make sure this is all nice and tight. There's no gaps under that coil. Get these feet blowing off. And then what I'm going to do, working out where my head's gone, this is why it's important, so that's this is where his head is. So I'm going to cut a, a slot down there, turn him upside down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this lump of clay I've just stuck on into four pieces. So I'll cut it right down to the body. And then pull each one out slightly. Now at this point, it's up to you whether you want to leave it like that or whether you actually want to shape it. I'm going to shape mine a little bit. I'm just going to get my fingers in there. I'm just going to round them off a little bit. Like that. Same on the other side. Like that. Same there. So now, before we have one lump of clay, we've now got four. But by doing it this way, the legs are in the right place for what I want in this design. And hopefully about the same size. Split them up like that. When I'm done, I will put a hole up through the middle of the legs, but for now, we keep that ball intact. So we have a body and it has legs. This is the basic form for all of the animals. So if you're watching any, want to do any of my other animals and you don't want to have to watch all of the, the, the uh, video, you can skip this part on future ones because this is exactly how we're going to start them all. So now for the elephant, I have cut out some pieces from my template. So I have a trunk, a head, and two ears. It's as simple as that. Okay. So we take the head, first of all. What we're going to need to do with it is we're going to need to curve it around my finger like that. Okay. And this is going to be attached onto... Oh, wrong end. Where's my cross gone? There we go. It's going to be attached onto the head, the head end there, and it's going to be joined in. Now, of course, again... There will be air underneath this, so you need to make sure this air can escape because if you're firing this clay, 
that is going to cause the head to blow off. So before I go any further, I am going to puncture my ball, make a hole in it, check that it's hollow by blowing in it, and then I can put this curved head on. So we scrape around the sides where it's going to affix, add some slip, uh, whoops. and then fix that curved head on like that. So it attaches at the top, goes down like that. Okay. Then around the back here, I'm just going to smooth it in a little bit, make sure it sticks. I don't want to smooth it in too much. I want to leave the line of the head there a bit. But if we do this and then smooth it in further down, then it will stick. Next, I'm going to add this trunk. And you might look at that and think, oh, that's a wrong, weird shaped trunk. In fact, this is giving you the basis of what you need. So it's not as it is. You're going to have to reshape it. So what you do is you fold it in half like that. So you get a little groove down the back, flatten the end like that, and then curve it into the shape that you want. So in this case, I'm going to have him curving up like that. Once you know that, you can attach it. Make sure that this groove of clay, can the air can escape up into the head. And you're not pressurizing it too much. So I'm just going to highlight that. And that's going to fit up under the, the snout there like that. Okay. So it's a slip on, it's a slip on both sides. Tuck it up under his nose there like that. And then this is going to attach to his body. It doesn't have to, you can have it any way you want, but in this case, it's going like that. Okay. This then is going to be smoothed down onto the trunk like that. Next, we take the ears. Now, when you cut them out, there is an up and up, an up and a bottom side. One side is flatter than the other. So we need to make sure when they go on, if I put them like that, you can see that's actually not right. I don't know if you can just make out, but it's straighter there than it is there. So actually that ear needs to go around like that. Okay. Having worked, at, worked that out, we then get, again, we score the surface. That's gonna go like that. Some slip. Put them on either side of his head, like that. Okay. And same again on the other side, making sure I've got it the right way up, which I'm not sure I have. Yes, I think that's better. Like that. Now we need to make sure these are going to stay on. So again, we're going to add a little bit of clay around them. So up the front of the head there, and up the front there. Now they actually, although these aren't going to be totally accurately anatomically correct, elephants do have sort of quite a raised forehead. So this clay that we're going to add in will actually add to the shape of the head. Like that, on the other side. Same on the other side. When you're working on sculptures, it's perfectly acceptable to go through a phase where it's looking very rough. We have a saying here that the detail, the finest finishing off comes last. Don't get too tied up in trying to smooth everything as you go. That can all come at the end. Okay. I'm starting to look a bit more like an elephant now. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this fella some eyes. And we need to create, if I bring this over here, you see there's a sort of dip where the eyes go in. And we do this with our thumbs. So you get your thumb either side, just sort of halfway down where the ears are, and push the clay in. Like that. Okay. And you can see with each, each step I do, how it's beginning to look more and more like an elephant. So to give him his eyes, this is where the paintbrush comes in. So we make two holes in that dip, one on that side and one on the other side. 
Now when you do this, it's a good idea to make sure you're looking at your sculpture straight on, so you get them right at the level there, but then look down on them from above to make sure that they're lined up there. It's not so much on this sculpture because there's not a lot of places they can go, but on others. So we've got the two holes. Now if you want to, it's again, it's perfectly acceptable to leave the two holes as eyes. You want to keep it really simple, but I'm going to uh, give this fella some eyeballs. And the way I like to do eyes is I like to get a piece of clay and I roll it till it looks like it's sort of about the right size and then cut it in half and roll it into two pieces and then it will be the right size. Again, I get it in my hand, give it a roll. Like that, do the same for the other piece. Always do both eyeballs before you start putting one eyeball in because if you don't get these two right size and you put them in and then you realize that you've got one eyeball bigger than the other you're going to be forever messing around in that situation it's better just to take the eyeball right out yeah i think that's going to be right so once i'm happy with my eyeball <laughs> i get my slip and i've got just a little bit of dab on it not too much you don't want to make your eyeball wet in fact i put too much on there so i'm just going to dry it out in my hand again Oops. Okay, try not to drop your eyeball on the way. Okay, let's do that again. That's the trouble when you start to work with tiny fiddly little bits of clay. Suddenly you find you drop one and you're back to square one. Okay. So I will no doubt find that eyeball about five minutes after I finish recording this video. So let's try again. My eyeball's round. Okay, try not to drop it this time. Tiny dab of slip on it, like that, pop the eyeball into the eye socket, like that. That's one, same with the other, tiny little bit of slip, pop the eyeball into the socket. Okay. A bit smooth. Now I'm going to give this elephant some trunks, oh he's already got a trunk, I'm going to give him some uh, tusks I meant to say. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the clay. Now, again, when you're making sculptures like this, don't be tempted to make things very thin. Remember that clay will shrink during firing. But also, if you make things too thin, they're going to be very easily broken. So be prepared to sort of oversize things a bit. It does make it look cute. It also makes it stronger. So I've taken a piece of clay and I've rolled it so I have a point at each end like that. Then again, I'm going to cut it in half. That way, again, as before, you should have two that are about the same thickness and the same length. And they're going to attach either side of the trunk there. So, give it a bit, a bit of slip. Get one nice and sticky. Put one there. Okay, and then one on the other side. One there. Okay. I'm not going to curve them just yet until I'm finished with them. Now to make sure they stay on and to make it look like they're actually part of the elephant's head rather than two pieces of clay that's stuck on, I'm going to get, a bit thicker than that, I'm just going to re-roll that one, I'm going to get a sausage of clay, like that, and cut it in half, put some slip on the back of it, a little bit, I'm going to put it around top of the tusk like that on that side and around the top of the tusk on the other side in like a little horseshoe then I'm going to smooth it down but I'm not going to smooth it down against the tusk just against the elephant's head so make sure I get it all clean like that and the same on the other side So his trunk, like that, and then smooth it in. Now, as I always say, if you find when you're doing this, you find it really difficult to get things smooth with your fingers, that's because your fingers need a clean. So, and I'm at that point that everything's rough, but I'm not too worried because an elephant is supposed to be rough. Like that. And you see how now, where they come out from the 
the head like that. They do look now that they're actually growing out of his head and not just randomly stuck on. This is also a trick if you want to do claws on something, like a bird sculpture or something like that. Okay, always with these sculptures, remember it's okay to pick them up, and in fact it's important to do so, because you need to look at them from all sorts of different angles. If you're just looking at it from one angle, you will miss all sorts of things, which will come back to haunt you later. Now I'm just going to shape his ears a bit more, so I can get my fingers in there, just manipulate them. I don't want to make them thinner, remember what I said about shrinkage, we don't want to get them too thin. But I just want to make them look a little bit more animated. Let's get him in there, a bit better there. Okay. Just smooth down. This is where we start to fiddle around with the detail a bit. His trunks, his uh, horns, smooth as well. Now, like all African animals, an elephant needs a tail to keep the flies off. So we're going to give him a little tail. Most African animals seem to have the end of their tails a piece which they use for flicking flies which is a bit like a it's so tough it's like wire so as you can see his tail's too long at the moment that's fine we'll get it on and then i'm just gonna put a bit of clay around it as well to make sure that it's gonna stay on and get a tool let's move it down like that all the way around move it down there I'm going to give his tail a little flick, like that, I think, and make it a little shorter. And then at the end, so he's got something to keep the flies off with, I'm going to give him some little tufty bits. Like that. At this point now, we start doing all the smoothing that might want, you might want, depending on how smooth you want it. If you want to go to the finer detail, you might also want to give him toenails. Uh, I'm also going to give him some lines on his trunk. So again, I check his trunks on properly. And then with the back of my knife, I'm just going to give some lines on his trunk. On the end there, I'm going to just give him something to breathe through. So I'm just going to use the end of the paintbrush just to give him some nostrils. Uh, to give him some toenails. I'm just going to, just going to use my paintbrush. I'm just going to push it in. So give him some elephant toenails, front and back. And then I'm going to get my pencil and I'm going to give him an expression. So nice sharp pencil. And we use this to press into the eyes. So I'm going to try and make this fellow look a little bit cross-eyed. I don't know whether I'll succeed. So I'll put him one side there. Like that. There we go. And the very last thing to do, oh, I'll just, just give another toenail there, just seen a bit I missed, give him three toenails on the front, I think, is to make sure we remember to give him an air pocket, or somewhere for the air pocket to be released. So we turn him upside down, you get your knife between his legs, like that, go right in, nice and deep, make a, twist it around, make sure you've gone through, again, if you're not sure, blow in it. It should sound a bit like you're blowing into a bottle. Again, you can also put a paintbrush in, make sure because it's absolutely vital that air can escape. And there we go. We have one ball elephant. So I hope you have some fun making him. Thanks a lot. Bye.